Sadiku Maldaya, Nigeria star player, playing over the rest. You see that? Welcome you on the show. Sports update on Trust TV. I'm Adini Aji Shafe. Well, that particular clip you just saw are generating a lot of issues right now. Nigerians reacting concerning that. That will be the first to be looking at. But before then, our usual suspect is in the studio. Let's have Olari Peter joining us. Good to have you. Thank you, Adini. It's my pleasure being back to the studio. Good one out there. We just saw that clip and uh, we look at our first story. Our medical team approached Sadiq Uman's uh, case, or rather, with professionalism, coming from Nigerian Football Federation. After that particular clip that we played, uh, actually uh, came on, uh, online, where Reza Sadiq actually played it. Now, uh, a lot of Nigerians were like, well, they said this guy, this player, called Sadiq Uman, is actually injured. But what happened? That we saw him play and training. But now, let's look at what happened. First of all, a statement uh, coming from uh, the society that before NFF counter that. Let's look at it, starting from the team. The Nigerian Federation was the one who made a medical exam to Sadiq. You should ask them. He's now working to be ready as soon as possible. Would not give any potential day to return with the injuries in the club. So that actually talked to one particular interviewer there. But now let's look at NFF's reaction after that particular video and also this statement. Well, we are surprised at the news trending on social media concerning Sadiq Umar and how he was withdrawn from the team camp. The fact is that our medical team meticulously abided by the best medical procedures and were diligent in their processes and conclusions before advising head coach Jose Vizero that the player be withdrawn from the squad. The player Sadiq Umar was okay when he arrived at camp. He had to undergo the standard pre-competition medical assessment and he was good. He started to train with the team. Unfortunately, he caught an injury on the back of his left knee during our friendly match against Guinea in Abu Dhabi on 8th January that led to a penalty against our opponent. The medical team advised that he substituted as a cautionary measure, but he said he was fine and could continue the game. At half time, he said he reiterated that he was good to continue playing and he played the entire 90 minutes. However, the following day, he woke up to see the knee swelling and the medical team had to apply ice, which is the normal thing. The same day, we had to travel to Lagos and on the 10th January, he flew to Abidjan. Then the swelling became worse. Most of the reports we have seen are not a true representation of what actually happened. We have a very competent medical team who are well trained in sports and exercise medicine and highly experienced and exposed to the most modern techniques and practices. They follow all the due processes and protocol in tandem with the consultant, uh, Neil Sorgion that the player himself contacted in Spain before the decision was made in the interest of the nation and the career of the player. As much as the medical team has refused to join issue with anyone due to the preventive patients and privacy policy, we will not allow anyone to rubbish our collective responsibility as Team Nigeria to this AFCON. We reiterate that the player was carried along throughout the process and he started his rehabilitation with the team physiotherapist before he returned to his club in Spain. What do you make of this, Olale Peters? The NFL are confused. Mm. To be honest with you, I didn't see any blame on the side of the resuicider. <clears throat> Sadiq Umar was injured. And they examined him. Based on this, their statement. Based on their words, not mine. They examined him and they advised that he should leave the camp because of the injury. Now, let me give you a very good example. <clears throat> we all watch Premier League. We watch La Liga, we watch Serie A, we watch all other European leagues. If a player sustained injury and he was substituted, before the end of that day, the medical team will come out and tell us that Adeniyi Adishafe has been injured and will be out for two weeks, one week, three days, and one month. Yes or no? <clears throat> that is a normal practice. That is what we expected from the medical team of NFF. To have come out that, oh, okay, he played and you want to substitute him. And also, I'm going to blame the coach. This is a key player, a player that you really, really need for the AFCON tournament. He had a minor injury during, um, what do you call it? During a friendly match, mm. not the competition itself. You remove him. It's not about what the player said, I want to do. Not that the player insisted that I want to play for 90 minutes. Who is in charge? The coach is in charge. So after the first injury, you remove him immediately and you let him understand, you may be hungry, please. You have a bigger task ahead of you. <clears throat> and they attend to him immediately. So you allowed him to play for the whole 90 minutes based on his own instruction. And they, the NFF, from the statement you read here, they said the 
to uh, the team or whatever that he can be withdrawn from the team. And he was withdrawn. And it got to Spade. And maybe after the investigation, they look at, ah, it's, it's, this, this, is, this, is, like this. <laughs> this is, it's just like, it's just like, this is just a minor issue. Mm. And he started training. If they want to cover up, they will not release the video that is trending now. Because they released the video. It is not a video that we got out of our own investigative or whatever. They released the video. And, and as that they know that there's no way if we have, we've been training hiddenly. Because if you look at that handle on the Instagram handle, that's it. Real society. Yes, real society. Ah, yes. Society. So if they want to do it in a way that they want us to know, they won't, they won't they, show there's it. a way they will do it that they won't show it. We won't let us know. So why are we blaming them? It is our fault. It is the NFL fault. Uh, it, it tells a lot about how serious we are as a nation when it comes to medical attention. In fact, as you speak right now, another angle has actually come into the story that, well, is it, is it that uh, something, uh, because now looking at that video that he's back to his feet, he's already uh, getting uh, a train to train. Uh, some uh, Nigerians are already saying, is there anything fishy concerning his remover instantly? Okay, and you know, this is Nigeria. Mm. This is where a uh, snake can swallow <laughs> million. And a lot of things can happen, so we're not going to rule that out also. Mm. Then also, after blaming the NFF, I'll give them 70% of the blame. I'll give the coach 200%. Then Sadiq Umar, I'll give him 10%. Why do I say I'll give him 10%? When he got to Spain, and he discovered himself that, okay, I'm fit. I'm like, okay. Like. The same way he, ins he insisted that he wants to stay and play for 90 minutes during the friendly match, he would have insisted that no, I'm not going to be withdrawn from the team. I'm okay, I'll be fine. Or if you have insisted when he got to Spain that no, I want to go back to my country. I want to go and serve my fatherland. I'm fine and I'm okay. But would that work? Because already the player has been called. You know, you have to quickly reach out to CAF. CAF will approve that and a, a player has been approved in his place. That's why I said, I'm going to give Sadiq Omar 10%. When they said he should be withdrawn, mm. I said he should have insisted. I'm that, not going. No, I can, I can I'm not stand going. it. I can stand it. We saw Terrible West during the last World Cup with the injury, with the bandage. He still was ready to... He was ready to uh, fight maybe, for that also. If you, if you look at that statement that they said the leg got swollen and then next day it got worse. Maybe the fear that, ah, this thing, let's not aggravate it. Let's just let quickly let it be. Maybe that was what led to all that. You know, at times when people heal very fast. Um, I don't know. If you are a good doctor, a sport doctor, you cannot give approval that a player should be withdrawn without knowing the actual cause of the injury. Hmm. So this is not a new injury, a swollen leg now. You never played ball before, sorry. No, I, I, have to, I, have to, I, I have to use our Nigerian I, No, I, I played table tennis, I didn't play football. <laughs> it's a swollen leg that if you can, like put ice, you can put ice on. Not a new injury, not a serious injury, a minor injury. That even you can use uh, ordinary aboniki to rub it. Before you know it, it goes. This is a Nigerian. So to be honest with you, I think the NFL should take the blame. So you don't even need to blame the risk society. It's like a player answered to a them. A lot of Nigerians, I mean, a lot of people are watching me don't know what is aboniki. Like, you, you, uh, you know, aboniki is, is a rub. I'm, I'm, and it has its own spices that is very hot. Once they apply it to any injury, take it or leave it. Within a day or two days, Everything will disappear. I hope that's not Africa with that with that physical power. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at times when you're talking sports, it can always be very uh, uh, casual, banting, a uh, bant kind of turn to a joke. But really, this is a serious matter. But really, well, we just hope that everything goes well with Eagles. Sadiq Kumar already is in Spain with his club, right beside that, and Eagles are ready to fly. Let's see what they will be doing against uh, Cote d'Ivoire on Thursday evening. A big match coming there. In fact, that match. Is fire going to be the biggest match so far in this tournament? I don't know if you want to see what will be happening. But for Dick Umar, NFF, everyone, Nigerians, let's just let this slide and let's move on. Hopefully, all the players have been given that call up, we're able to justify why they are given that chance and they will do well. Now, let's talk about another Eagles player now. Talking about uh, Teremofi. Teremofi has joined the camp of Eagles over there in Abidjan. He's in the team right now and already they are talking that his inclusion will boost them. Uh, Mofi is around. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's hard uh, to what they have currently. He has his own experience also. He has been part of the team also. And he's not that a bad player if uh, utilized very well 
by the coach. So I think it's a very good thing that we have him in the camp currently. A good one that we have Terem Mofi in the camp. At least uh, let's see what he'll be adding to that team against Cote d'Ivoire. And also Coach Pizarro. Nigerians can't wait to see what will be assembly on Thursday against Cote d'Ivoire. At that day, <laughs> that game, the, the Ivorians will come out. Um, I don't need. Let me advise you before the match. Mm. Don't put your hope very high. That's the truth. And I said it during the morning show that the best the Nigerian can get is a draw. And that is when we played optimally. That is when we are serious. That's the best the pick we can get. Is We've never had good uh, history of winning or defeating a host country. Mm. Check our record. It's there. It has always been difficult for us. And we're talking about Ivory Coast that will be playing their second match. And you know the rivalry between Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire also. So a lot of factors here. Yeah. And the standard they're going to play, it's uh, over 60,000 capacity. And they will all come they, out. They will come out. They will make the noise. They will support their team. So the best I think we can get, it's a draw. But before I can say if we can get a draw or not, I have to look at the formation. Because that formation, it means a lot, a mm. lot. Look at the team list that we went with. Look at the team list that we went with. That's even something that we should be concerned about to start with. But now we are there, we don't have a choice. How can we make use of what we have currently? Now, the first thing that we need to do, we need to make use of our wingers very well. We have to play from the wing. That has been Nigerian pattern. If you look at the success of Super Eagles, that's always come from the wings. Always from the wings. Imali Namunike, if you need the judge, Imali Namunike, uh, Mokachi, Tijani, Tijani Babangida, uh, Payao Sikidia, they always work from flanks. From the flanks. That's what we need. And also, we need a nine. We are overusing uh, Osime. Osime. Take it or leave it. We are seriously overusing him. But people that have never played football before, you know, they're the best commentator. And what happened now? Why did you just score that ball now? You want to keep an empty net? It's not as easy as that. It's fatigue. And pressure. And the pressure on him also. Because he's the only one carrying the team on his head. I don't even know the reason why he's not the captain of that team. Because he has more commitment, he's more dedicated hmm. than any other players on the team. So I think the formation will really help us. We have to play from the wing to start with. Then number two, we have to make use of Osime very, very, very well. In fact, the instruction is you shouldn't go beyond 25 meters from the box eighteen. Stay in the 18 uh, box 18, then from that box 18, you shouldn't move more than 7 meters out there. I don't want to see you. So let them give him the ball. Let them distribute the ball to mm -hmm. him. So that is what I think we need to do. Ademola Lukman, Chukwese, they need to be on top of their game on that very, very day. That is what we need to do. If you don't do that, they're going to lose against Cordova. And once you lose against Cordova, that means they're having only one point. Guinea, they'll have the courage that they, they can do something. They have nothing to lose if they should lose to Equatorial Guinea. So that means we are coming back home. Well, right now, talking about Eagles there, it's going to be a big one. They just have to tighten their belt against Cote d'Ivoire. Well, before we wrap it up, let's run through some story in, in still in football. But this time around, well, I think we have to look at Al Hassan Yusuf Al A's face on injury against Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea, we play, or rather, we play against them at, at that particular game. We saw that he uh, seems to be injured, but he said, oh, no. It's not really a big deal, but uh, it's getting better. The young man is showing class. Uh, he has done well. If, if you look at that game, Alassane Yusuf, despite the big shoe of uh, Wilfred Ndidi, he show his class there. Well, right now, quickly, let's go on a short break as we have uh, MPFL for you. Bring the result and also the table. But before then, let's have this game. Beautiful for Plus United. Can he bring it in? What a chance for Plus United. He scores. Yakub Adams has scored. What a goal. What a goal for the Peace Boys. Yakub Adams is up. I, I do. I do. Uh, Caleb, that's, uh, that's Plus United for you. They have that particular discipline. If they don't score in the early stage, of course, what a fight for Plus United for <laughs> Kayim Barada. Ima about to oh win a goodness. beautiful strike there. He was actually overpowered. Aimba back in possession, keeping possession. Joseph Atule, he looks for the center forward. Imo, he gets up perfectly. Can he score? Can he score? Oh my goodness. What a miss. So I wonder who is going to be coming off from that particular midfield. But you talk about that, the likes of Elijah as well. A chance for Aimba International. The goalkeeper is out of his line. That was a poor decision from uh, <laughs> the big course. Dagger has just been everywhere. Super fantastic. 
Sampam has been able to maneuver his way forward. He loses possession. Yes, the referee calls the ball back. That was a good decision by the centre referee. Yellow card for the opponents. One and set in play. Akani and Daga Daniels in the same midfield can tell you it's a danger. Oh, and a bludge there. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Goals have come courtesy of a brace by Godwin Obadje, who played his club football with Plateau United at one point. NPFA, very, very interesting when it was this game there. Plateau United against AIM by International. Let's look at the result of games played just here yesterday so that we can at least look at NPFL before we go. Sporting Lagos played 2 2 against Shooting Stars. Bayelsa United defeated Bender Insurance 2 0. Katsina United. Uh, two nil against Raymond Stars. Dovi Stars play at least uh, the fourth hard against uh, Kano Pillars. That draw has given Kano Pillars, uh, rather, Lobby Star the chance now. Rivers United against Aqua or going over the Emporah. Right now, looking at the way the table is standing, well, for Lobby Stars, they continue to sing because like, right now they are topping the group after playing one of draw against uh, Kano Pillars. Good one for Lobby for the father they've upstage uh, Raymond Stars. From the top of the table there well uh looking at the mpfl mpfl seems to be getting more interesting now this week uh, maybe you stay two two weeks and then another person take over formerly it was doma united remo now it's lobby yes and that's the beauty of the game and it shouldn't be an anima uh, anima game in the sense that if a lion is running a race with others you know who's going to be who's going to be the winner so and that's uh, what i think we really need to make it more competitive you see and if you look at it now between uh, <clears throat> and doma play two remo and lobby star nobody nobody needs to sleep once you sleep you draw someone will take over so this is how it should be and it's not only there if you look at the bottom and four also you see the likes of uh, rivers united baiza united gumbi and atlan 16 17 17 17 even up to sporting lagos and aquaibon sporting lagos that they started with and that's what they call initial <coughs> gra -gra. Gra -gra, right? yeah uh, i think they they borrowed the spirit of asna when the league started the way asna was winning as if they're going to win the league from the one brought asna to mpf for good when you're doing analysis you have to do <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, you should have free Brentford or Fulham. <laughs> Brentford and Fulham, they didn't lead the league when they started Premier League. Oh my goodness. It's Arsenal that started uh, that What, what about Tottenham leading the league? What about. Uh, Nobody has done it like Arsenal. Manchester United. No, it's, it's Arsenal. <laughs> well, well, not, not even Chelsea. Chelsea has never been there for the, for the past one year, two years. Why, why Arsenal? Because they, 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 were there, they were there before. Uh, Chelsea was never there. I, I agree with you. And that's what I'm okay. saying. That at least. And what do you call it again? Sporting Lagos, they started with the spirit of Arsenal. Uh, in Sporting Lagos, if started. you want to remember, I should have mentioned Sporting Lisbon. Sporting, Sporting. <laughs> not uh, How did some Sporting jump to Arsenal? What, okay. what has Arsenal got to do? I understand your anger. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Uh, come, come on. Arsenal fans out there. Uh, come, well, anyway, don't worry. One of these days, we're going to open the phone line so that Arsenal fans can batter a lot of the pizzas. Good one there. Okay, so if you look at it now, from 14th position to 20th position, it's just three points that separate them. That's 16 to 19. So that shows that from what we are having, uh, from fourth to fourth also, we are having from 14 to 20. So it's going to be very interesting how the league will turn out this season. Mm. Now look at Kuala uh, United, 19 points. So if they lose the match or they draw a match, probably they will go down. You have Sporting Lagos, 18 points. Aqua United, 18 points. Rivers United, 17. Baiza United. So it's very competitive even at the bottom level and also competitive at the top level. level. So this is how a league should look out. It's going to be on um, uh, it's not going to be over until the last day and the last result. And that is what we want to see in our domestic league. And also something very important. If you look at the um, <clears throat> the match between Plata United that you Ayimba. and Ayimba, the match officials, they are more than the spectators at the <laughs> Nigerian <laughs> League, something just have to be done constantly. The match officials are more than the spectators. So I think a lot needs to be done about um, awareness and um, probably free tickets or free buses for home support for people to go in there so that they can share their people up. Because if you don't go, if you don't watch the match, you will know what they have and the skills that we have. And that will not enable us to put the pressure on the coach. That I'm talking about the Super Eagle coach. That, mm. Oh, I've, I've watched all Kano Pillars' own matches, and I know they have a good creative midfielder, they have a good defender. I've watched Doma United, I've watched uh, Lobby Star. 
and Ugo Rangers. And Ugo Rangers. Just practice, you have to support you have some to, players. Exactly. So that the only way we can know that is for us to pay attention and go and watch the match. I think the government should try as much as possible to do something to make it much easier for people. Private transportation, how much do you need to sell in transportation? Mm. So at least that free yeah. transportation would get you to the stadium, stadium and also sensitize people back. through media. Let them know that, okay, this match is coming up. Radio, TV, internet, uh, online rather, everywhere. If, if, if you turn around, you see, oh, anybody is playing this, this is playing this. That's also at least motivate people to be, okay, let's go and see what is happening. It's going to well, our domestic league. A good one there. I've been talking concerning MPFL there. Well, right now, um, our time is almost up. But uh, uh, before we go, we quickly look at uh, AFCON. Just for a prediction. Just uh, let's just see from Malali Peters. Maybe you predict right. Let's look at the AFCON fixtures. Uh, well, one is already <coughs> going right now. Tunisia, Namibia. Mali, South Africa. Just the scoreline. Tunisia, Namibia. Okay, 2-1. Um, Tunisia. Tunisia. Oh, Namibia. No, Tunisia will win the match. <laughs> two, two one for Tunisia. Mali, South Africa. To be a draw. Big match. A draw. A draw. 1-1 one, one or 2-2? Two, two. No, uh, it won't be a goal. Let's draw. Uh, there will be a goal in there. 1-1. One, one. A big one between the Eagles of Mali versus uh, ba so, Fasna Bafana or South Africa. That game will be a big one there. We don't, we don't know who's going to win, but though we pray that it's going to be a draw there. And before we go, Italians so are Juventus versus Asolo. Uh, a big match there coming for Juventus against Asolo. They can they win it? That's football there. Anything can happen there. But, uh, I'll repeat us. Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire. Just one word. Okay, and as in we are winning, we are losing already. Yes. Okay, um, I've said it twice and I'll say it again. I see a draw. A draw? Yeah. 1 1 or nil nil? Well, Nigeria, we've never played a, what do you call it, a, a clean sheet. We've never had a clean sheet because we have a poor defense and our keeper, I, can't, I don't even have that confidence in him. So, clean sheet is totally out of it. And our goal scorer also has been very, very bad nowadays. So, we don't have a player that can score two, three, four goals. We can't put everything on Osime all alone. So, based on that, I think the best we can get is 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. Well, let's see what happens on Thursday. We'll leave you with that. Big one out there, Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire. On Thursday, we wish Eagles the best there and also wishing Golden Arrows the best over there in Egypt. That's it on the show. Allah Peters, thank you for coming. Thank you so much, and, and I'm wishing Asna the best also. A Since good one, at least. Uh -huh. You have robbed me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adeni, uh, Jisha Fair Sport. It's always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.